Hello, it's Professor Fiori, and in this video we're going to start our adventure in embedded programming using the C programming language and Arduino. Okay, what I've got up here is uh, the Pellis C compiler. So you want to call up the Pellis IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. The icon for that looks sort of like a beach ball with uh, a C in the center of it, nice and colorful. So this is blank basically and what we'll do is we'll come over to the file menu new project so we have to decide first of all on the kind of project we're going to use and what we're going to be looking at is a, a Windows 64-bit obviously I'm sitting on a Windows computer here so I'm going to highlight that and then just give this a name right nice um, adventurous name like my program so this is going to create a directory for me and all the files will go in there. So here it is over here, my program. Now there um, is a large area over here to, to create your source code. Down here is sort of a notification area, which we'll be looking at. And um, obviously the, the view of the project, the various files in here. C is a very capable language in that it can be used for small projects, medium-sized projects, huge products. Uh, we've got multiple people working on projects, so we can divide up the source code into dozens or quite literally hundreds of different files. This is very handy. It speeds up um, compilation. The uh, compiler is going to be the piece of the program that turns our source code, our English-like source code, into uh, an intermediate uh, machine code, if you will, what the microprocessor or microcontroller is going to be using. So um, from here, what we want to do is create some source. So I'm going to say new source code. This is one of, like I said, maybe a hundred different source files. Now as a C program, they're all going to end in .c. That's the extension that we will use. Now, Pellis has a lot of configurability here. So I just happened to set it up in a way that um, I kind of like. Uh, if you go into options here, you can change the colors. I've actually increased the size of the font, so it's going to be a little easier for you to see on these videos and sort of lightened up the background here a little bit. I particularly like the colors that you can use. Right, look at this. Not just antique white, but ghost white. Cadet blue. Right? I mean, this is just beautiful stuff. Sky blue. You can get dark magenta. Some of this stuff is crazy. Fire brick. Chocolate. Peru. We actually have a color named after a country. Okay, whatever. Um, so I'm going to write a little program in here, and then I'll explain what I'm doing with it. We'll look at this line by line and um, notice at certain points this will automatically indent for you. This is going to be our you know classic first program here. Notice it's giving you a um, sort of a hint on this the usage of this particular function. That can turn out to be uh, quite handy. There's my little bit of code. Okay, as you can guess, it's going to print out the, the phrase hello world. I'm going to save this. And um, I can save it pretty much any name I want. I'm going to call it Zoinky. Now, do I want to add this to my project? Yes, I do. Notice what happens. Source files. Zoinky.c. As I said, there could be many source files in here. You know, if you imagine a, a large program, let's say you were going to do like an oscilloscope utility, you would have functions gathered together for things like the data acquisition part, the display, the uh, ability to print, to you know save 
data out to a data file to read it back in, all these different things. You could compartmentalize all those in their separate C files, right? Separate .c files. So you could have multiple people working on this simultaneously. And you could be working on the print version. Somebody else could be working on the graphics file, right? Beautiful sort of thing. All right, so here's my little program. Um, so you might have noticed down here, things have been going on with my status. So I'm just going to immediately go over here, build. So what the heck is build do? Like I said, we have a compiler that's going to run through here and turn this into sort of an intermediate stage of language and a, a sort of a retargetable assembly language, if you will. And uh, once that's done, another program called a linker comes in, grabs this compiled code, which is usually called a, an object code, an object file with an extension of .o or .obj, depending on your operating system. So you'll have several of those, right? If we had several files over here, we'd have several object files. So these all get sort of stitched together with library code, which we'll talk about in a, in a second. And um, all of that turns into ultimately the executable that you're going to run, right? So you, you find it handy to kind of look at this as if you were the compiler, like what is this thing doing? Include standard IO.h, that's STDIO, standard input output. So this has all kinds of, of uh, information about a library of functions that do things like printing to the console or getting data from the console from the user. In fact, printf lives inside standard io.h, okay? Or at least it's described in here. There's a standard io library where the actual code is, but this has some information that allows the compiler to figure out what's going on. Now, as I mentioned, we have multiple pieces of source code, potentially. We're not going to in this. We're just going to have the one. But potentially, we could have several individual source files. How do we know where to begin, right? Where's, where does the program actually start? Well, it always starts in a function called main, right? Now, when you look at C code, you just see functions, 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 functions. They're all over the place. And all functions are kind of the same in that they have an argument list, in other words, things you pass to them, and a return value, right? what it gives you back. So just think of your calculator, right? Like you want to take uh, the arc sine of a value or the log base 10 of a value. So the value you're going to work on is the argument, and the thing you get back on the calculator is the return value. So this is basically saying that uh, nothing's coming into this. That's what void means and it's going to return an integer value. We're not actually going to make use of that in this particular program, but it could return an integer value, right? Now, printf stands for formatted print statement, and this actually is capable of taking multiple arguments, but right now we only have one, which is the two words, hello world. Backslash n stands for a new line character, so it's going to skip a line for us on the output. So I'm going to go over here, um, right? We built this thing, and this is the execute button. So this is going to run the program for us. A little window is going to pop up, right? A little console window, text window is going to pop up, and we'll hopefully we'll see the phrase hello world in there. Hey, there it is, hello world. Okay, press any key to continue, right? Where's the any key? Okay, now, to change this, right? I want to monkey around with this. Um, first thing, let's take a look at a possible error. Right? Now, if you were the compiler, you need to know what printf is, where it comes from, so to speak, uh, what kind of arguments it takes. Right? Just like your calculator would be expected to take a, a real number if you're going to take the arc sign. Like you can't take the arc sign of, of your name. Right? What's the arc sign of Larry? I have no idea. Uh, so it has to have an appropriate match, and this helps us catch errors right, in our code. So that's called type checking. It makes sure you've, you're sending function the right number of variables and also the right kinds of variables. So there is a, a template, something called a prototype, inside, inside standard io.h that describes printf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to... Um, 
comment out this. So the comment, the standard comment, is uh, a slash and an asterisk, and then the reverse. So everything between here gets ignored, essentially, right? Um, notice this is turned green. So this is a, a nice sort of visual to tell you that's yeah, a comment, doesn't really exist. There's also a single line, which is a double like this. You do two slashes, and everything on that line is ignored. I could have used both in this case. This is really nice, though, because you can comment out entire large sections of code while you're debugging something just by using this. All right, so right now, if the compiler comes in, it sees main, it knows what that is, and that's sort of like, you know, built into the definition of language. But printf is not really part of the language, so to speak. It's not part of the definition. It's, it's just a, a library element that exists. And ultimately, you can make your own libraries with your own functions in them. Right? Um, so without this line, without this, the, the pound include, the compiler's not going to know what the heck this is. So let's go in. I'm going to save this and then build it. Okay. Warning, undeclared function printf. Okay. It actually made an assumption on here. So this is a warning. This is not fatal. It's making an assumption. I'm going to show you some examples where it, uh, in some compilers, this would actually say, no, I don't, I don't want this. And it would refuse to do anything. But I'm going to get back here. Okay. Now, I'm going to create my own function. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of cheat here a little bit. I'm just going to do a whole bunch of different kinds of different kinds of print statements in here. Right. How are you doing? All right. So this is a little contrived, I will admit. Here's my new function. So it doesn't do a whole lot, right? It just puts this extra line. But just to show you how this works. And back in here, I'm going to call this new function, print more. All right. So yes, I understand you could just take this line and stick it here. But, you know, just imagine that this was like directions for something. And it was many, many, many lines long. Then you could just say, you know, print directions, and then you have all of this stuff, right? So you got it kind of compartmentalized instead of just having one huge main program, which is not good form, right? You want to sort of modularize things. Okay, now I'm going to go and um, save, build. Oh, look at this. Project build ended in complete failure. How embarrassing. What happened? Look, warning, undeclared function print more. Did you mean printf? No, not really. All right. And it's assuming some things. Okay. And then it comes in error, redeclaration of print more. See, so here is the warning. And it said, I don't really know what print more is. So I'm just going to assume something. Okay. I'm going to assume it's an external code. In other words, it's in another file somewhere, basically, or a library. And I'm going to assume it's returning an int. Okay, fine. Well, if it does, you know, that's, that would kind of work. Um, but in fact, it doesn't, because we're saying it takes no arguments, void, and it returns no arguments, also void. So then it comes down, this is what the compiler's doing, right? It comes down here and it sees print more and it goes, I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, let's just assume it returns an int. Okay, fine. The next thing it does, it comes down here and says, oh, here's this thing called print more. Wait a minute. I already assumed print more returned an int, and now you're telling me it does a void? Well, it can't do both, right? Previously declared. Okay, expected int. Oops, found void. So that's that's just death. Okay, so how do you get rid of how do you get rid of that problem? How do you make the compiler happy? You have two options. You can either make sure that print more exists before main. Right? So you just copy this up to here. So this way, when the compiler comes down, it sees print more first, and basically it's going to build 
a, a list of functions, okay, as it, as it parses down through the code. And when it comes into main sometime later and it sees print more, it says, oh yeah, I already saw print more. I know what the heck that is. Boom, boom, boom. I'm happy. Off we go. No warnings, no errors, no nothing. Instead, because that can be a little, a little cumbersome, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line. I'm just going to stick it up here kind of by itself with a semicolon after it. A semicolon is, is uh, sort of like a, uh, the ending of a sentence, like a period that um, sort of completes the statement, if you will. What the heck is this thing? Well, this is technically called a prototype. It's a template. It's not the actual code, but it tells the compiler, hey, look, there is a function somewhere. Maybe it's later in this file. Maybe it's in another file. Somewhere there's something called print more. It takes no arguments, it returns no values. And the compiler, like I said, sort of, you know, remembers that, makes a list of it, and then continues on down. So when it comes into main, it sees the printf, and it sees print more. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. Great. Okay. It checks it. Hey, it doesn't pass any arguments. It doesn't assign anything on the return value. So this is being used correctly. Then it comes down to, oh, here it is. Okay, here's print more. Yeah, that's exactly as it was originally you know, dictated in the prototype, everything's fine, everything's great. So this should compile, or compile just fine for us. And there we go. Ended successfully. Okay, so let's run this. Hello world, how are you doing? All right? Beautiful. All right, so those are two different ways of approaching it. You could have just copied this up here or you used the prototype. And at this point, maybe you have a clue as to what's actually in standard io.h. Among other things, there are prototypes for all the functions that are in the standard io library. All right, so if you're going to make your own, your own library, um, or you're going to you know, have several files out here, then you would create something called a header file, which are these .h files. And you would have prototypes in there and things like uh, numeric constants and string constants and you know other kinds of things that you might find useful right those would all be packed into the header file for there so there are tons and tons and tons of libraries and associated header files uh, if you're going to do anything for example with math which we are anything beyond the very basic stuff you know add subtract multiply divide if you want to take uh, you know the arctan of something or the log base 10 of something, you're going to have to call up a math library, and there's a math.h, and there's an associated math library, and there's a whole bunch of functions in there. When you look at the um, install for your compiler, you will see that there are a series of, of um, directories or folders. One of them is called either bin or bind. Right? depending. Some people call it bin, some people call it bind. It's the binaries, it's the executables. So the actual compiler, the linker, the IDE, all that stuff lives in, lives in here. Uh, then there's something called include. Okay? All the header files are in here. So if you actually go into the include directory, and I recommend you do this, don't change anything, but it's good to just look at it. Go into the include directory and just see all of these files in there that are labeled, you know, something.h, like standard io.h, standard lib.h, string.h, math.h. There's a gazillion of them. Okay. So you've got those. Um, and then you have uh, the libraries, right? So that's, some people call that libs, some people call it libs, but those are the libraries. So there's, a, you know, a library for standard io, right? Um, it's instructive to actually look in there and see, you know, what is actually in there. And uh, chances are, for general programming purposes, something you need has probably already been built. That's already in there. So um, there are also third-party things that you can get, you know, for like graphics and statistics and all kinds of crazy stuff that are out there that you can just tack on. Right? That's a little beyond what we're going to do here, but this is our startup. All right. So 
quick recap here. Programs always start with main. I don't care if you have 15 or 55 source files. It always starts with main. There's only one main. You don't put a main in every single source file. There's only one. That's the single entrance point of your program. You can have more functions in there, right? You can have 20 functions in a particular file. That's perfectly fine. But the compiler has to know about them before it sees them in use. So you either do that by positioning. In other words, you put this ahead of where it's actually called, or you do what I just did here. You create a prototype for it. If you got a lot of them, our programs are going to be kind of small. But if you have a lot of them, you're probably going to want to put those in separate header files. Okay? All right. So I suggest you just try some uh, experiments, monkey around with this. The... Um, Backslash n, like I said, is a, a new line. So I'm just going to add another backslash n here. And then I'm going to add a backslash t. Backslash t stands for uh, a tab. Right? Now, if you're wondering, how do I get a backslash? Well, you can go backslash, backslash. right? Because if I just wanted to say, like, backslash the something, I'd say, hey, it's a backslash t, or, you know, backslash n, and a word that starts with n. How do you get that? Right? How does it not accidentally give you a new line or a tab? So you do a backslash, 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 and that'll just give you a backslash. Right? So if I do this, what do you think the output's going to look like? I'll just let you think about that for a sec. How are you? Right, well, first we got the hello. This pushed over, right? It's actually pushed down a line. You can't really see it too well, but it's pushed down a line because of the backslash n. Then we got the backslash t. So it's pushed over a tab space. Okay, backslash n. Go to the next line. Call print more. How are you? Backslash t. So here are you. There's the spacing for the backslash t. You. Then what? Backslash n. So new line pops down here, doing, right, and then back, the other backslash n, which gives you the press any key. Okay? So, monkey with it. Try it. Fiddle with it. Have fun. Next time, we'll take a look at numbers. We'll look at the data types, fundamental data types that live in C. Okay? All right.